uh, Nick, um, but uh, he's on the screen. Well, he, we have got him on the line. Um, Nick Galatis, are you there? I am. Do you want me to try and get on again? I don't know why I'm not on. I'm linked, but you can't seem to uh, link me here for some reason. So I can, I can, uh, I'm watching you, but I'm not quite sure why it's not happening. Uh, can we all hear Nick pretty well? I can hear him perfect. Okay, Nick. Well, well, you're on here. So, so what we'll do, um, we'll try and we'll we'll um we'll we'll just have to pop you up there like that. There we go. <laughs> um, Nick. Well, well first of all, yeah. Now, well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, we really, really appreciate your time, and um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, it is an absolute pleasure having you on the um show for for our very first show of of. 2021 but mate um the last two years um since or well, has it been two years since you've been involved with the australian uh, with the association of australian football clubs um it's been it's been a very eventful time but um you know in the last week or two weeks there's been a quite a fair bit of talk about not just um um i guess the 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 fact that we we've got him we might have him we might have him he's gonna he's gonna come on <laughs> We've got him. <laughs> Is that better, boys? There oh, we go. Look at that. Look at that. Mate, that's great to have you on board. How are you, mate? How's things? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, good to be on. So I heard what you were saying there, so you can continue from there. So I heard you, um, the intro. Yep. So, yep. Let's, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk continue. about it. James Johnson came out um, in the press well, about a week ago, and he talked about the fact that it's, it's, it's a case of now not – do we need a second national second division? It's when, and I guess the big thing now is between AAFC and the FA is is the difference in how it should be executed. Yep. Uh, James Johnson is proposing a model maybe where the clubs will play in their NPL divisions during the winter, I suppose, and once that finishes, it would go off and into a um, sort of an expanded national Premier League's championship, isn't it? Like a Champions League format. Oh. Yeah, um, Tom tell us more about what what he's what he's suggesting. Yeah, before we go, I mean, what he, uh, James has suggested, uh, you've heard, we've heard, uh, and in fairness to uh, to James, it's it's a developing situation. It's not that um, James has put up or the FFA has put up a particular um, model. He's just suggesting, for example, and I think uh, from what he said to Simon Hill the other day that uh, philosophically he said he favours what. Um, a national division of the type that we've proposed. Yep. Um, and but pragmatically, I think he, he said, using his word, um, he wants to make sure that what we're proposing can work. And he thought that perhaps um, uh, where is that at the moment? Pragmatically, a, a a competition of the type where you have an NPL followed by a Champions League style. I think is the best way to put it. Follow up second phase of the season. He sees presently as pragmatically easier to get up. I think that's that's how we put it. Yeah, so, look, he actually said, uh, however, Johnson believes that, that a more pragmatic model is a two-phase system where clubs yeah. will play out the M local yeah. NPL season with the best sides to then progress into yeah. a national-based Champions League group stage competition at the back end yeah. of the year. Yep. And I think when you uh, listen to the whole thing there, Craig, he went on, it was a long, was a long discussion he had with Simon and he was talking about how it was easier to start that one, I think he said he went yeah. on to say, which obviously the simpler you make something, the easier it is to start. I mean, that goes with that saying, I think. So the question and uh, is what's the best version of the second division? That's for us. And we've, I think, put front and centre in our model that we want to achieve the best possible. So from our perspective, um, we've canvassed our clubs, done a lot of work, as you would have seen in our report, mm -hmm. and we say um, a model of the type that we've proposed is um, pragmatic, is doable, uh, but of course we're the, we're in the working stage. And as James said, twenty twenty one is about working, and we propose to uh, take part in that and demonstrate why it is that we say the model that we've proposed is in fact not only philosophically the right way to go, as James has said in terms of his preference, but actually pragmatically it works, and only it works, it works well, and it works better than any other model. So that's that work still to be done, and we look forward to doing it. So how does how do you see the um, how does the AAFC uh, see the league set up 
um, or in, how does yeah, how do you guys see the league setting up? What what would your be your ideal league look like, uh, Nick? Well, it's a developing situation. So again, from the report, we, uh, we want to get to a situation where you've got maybe sixteen teams playing um, home and away nationally uh, over a normal season, thirty type round league. But we might not start there. It depends how what the expression of interest that we would propose. And again, that's what we would propose. Football Australia would need to agree and introduce it. But discussing our model now, if it were to be adopted, what we would uh, start with is perhaps potentially a smaller uh, model to start, perhaps 12 teams, depending. We might have 16 viable candidates. We may not. We don't know yet. We'll see. Um, but we look at, we're looking at a developing uh, model, guys, so that it would start at, uh, at one point and develop to another. So that's, that's what we see as... Um, a viable start moving towards uh, a far stronger and better um, second division as we progress. Yeah. So in terms of obviously the clubs, um, I would imagine, and what we, we all know because we've all seen the, the documents, there's been a number of, uh, yeah. of clubs that have um, highlighted their expression of interest to join the league. Um, where does that sit at the moment? I think, um, if I remember right, there's something around 18 clubs, 18, 20 clubs still within the um, the, the group or the, the, the discussion groups. Is it more? No, than no, clubs? it's many more. Uh, uh, Craig, we've got 32 contributing clubs to our okay. uh, what we call our partner group, and there's many other clubs. Of course, it's not exclusive of them. They're, they're the clubs that are contributing and have contributed so far to the report. Um, and but there's many other clubs around the country that potentially uh, would apply. We're not excluding. From our perspective, no one is excluded. Uh, any club or group of clubs can uh, can join. We're looking for the best possible, as I said before, the best possible second division. But we have 32 directly interested participants in the report that we've prepared. As you can see on the um, footage, we've got a, a, yep. some highlights from last year's New South Wales NPL Grand Final between two clubs that certainly would be vying for that, Sydney yep. United, um, who have produced so many Socceroos over Absolutely. the years and 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 rockdale city start start sons um yeah. and, and, and you mean this type of action in in these type of stadia with these types of crowd now remember this game was absolutely you know um pelting down with rain but the, the, it must be a mouth-watering prospect to think that you know these type of games could be played week in week out right yeah. around the country and yes. getting crowds that but that potentially would would be just as good as the a league but um Probably the thing that excites me the most is that then there's this avenue for talented young individuals to play. I mean, one of the kids there, I think um, Michael Rue is his name, I think for Sydney United, came on and now he's playing for MacArthur FC. That's a great example. That that must be something that's driving you guys, Nick, as well. Don't you 100%, but also um, you have to remember that's the starting point. So that will be the that will be the starting phase. That's yep. what you just put up there is the product of the NPL. Now, can you imagine where, where that could go if you take the best of and you develop it from there? So that would be absolute base starting point, what you saw. We mm -hmm. would have a far better and stronger league than that is where we want to go. So we don't want to just take that, replicate it and leave it there. We want to take that, um, use it as our launch and go from there. That's the point. So that you'd have the best of and you'd have lots of these players playing together, best against best, uh, developing and uh, putting, in, putting themselves in the shop window for A-League and above. That's, that's part of it. That, that's critical. So going back to the clubs, Nick, for me, um, how is the AAFC going to um, finalise their clubs? What is going to be the, um, the criteria involved in clubs being involved in the first uh, or the inaugural league of the um, of the b league second division championship whatever we want to call it so craig is i never tire, never tire of saying we won't be doing that it doesn't fall to us to be doing that we're not okay. saying we're doing it this is a football australia uh, project uh, as james said it's not about if anymore it's about how and when yeah. our job we're, we're contributing to that discussion what we're saying is the clubs um that the npl clubs currently uh, really is where these um, the second division clubs will come from, where the representative body. We're doing some work. We're trying to assist. So we're not wanting to go to discussions with Football Australia, as James has pointed out, this 11 principles about having uh, discussions with member federations, AAC, interested stakeholders, and we're not going to turn up to such a discussion uh, with a bit of guesswork and a bit of wish and a wish list. We've done a lot of work to demonstrate what the second division can look like according to our clubs. So that's where we are. It won't be us who select them. 
uh, and it won't be us who who um, started start this competition. We are looking to have the competition run by Football Australia. That would be how we see it. That's how I believe Football Australia sees it. Uh, in that sense, we're working hand in hand with them. Uh, and in fairness to James, he's had a lot on his plate. I mean, you know, he's only been in the job for about a year and a bit, I think. And this thing called COVID that was just hit us in Melbourne again yeah. today, we're in lockdown, um, has had a bit to do with his first year. Uh, he's had to get through the unbundling. He's won this little thing called the World Cup, um, working on the domestic transfer system. He's done a bit of work. Uh, we've got to give him a bit of credit. So, oh, this absolutely. Is this is on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate where he's coming from. He's said philosophically where he stands personally, uh, and he's expressed some very reasonably held um, uh, um, reservations as a CEO of a major organisation responsible for the game. And we, as a stakeholder, are there to show and demonstrate that, you know, or we can meet those reservations and demonstrate that this league is the best way to go. Absolutely, Nick. At the, at the top of the show, we talked about how important it was over the COVID lockdown period last year for clubs to do strategic planning and, 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 this, and the like. And, um, and, you know, we've said it last year as well. And I guess one of the things that James Johnson and Football Australia have done is not only plan, but they've actually, actually realised certain things. They've unbundled the A-League um, and the clubs. There's been serious um, discussion about the second division. And, and one thing talking to you about that as well is the fact that earlier today is uh, you made a really good point where you said, look, the National Soccer League finished up in 2003. So a lot of those clubs have progressed and, 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 and I guess uh, developed. And this second division today of 2021 or 2022 wouldn't necessarily be the NSL of 2003, no. because that would have no. almost been 20 years apart. Absolutely. Not, tell us more about what, what you meant by that as well. Yeah. This is not, yeah, uh, well, was, we had a bit of a discussion there. We did. Know, uh, about, about a number of things. It was meant to be um, uh, me getting my technical uh, abilities up and going. And, and we succeeded almost, in the end. <laughs> that, that, that almost didn't work. Uh, but here we are. Uh, yeah, look, well, it, it, it's a big discussion, this second division, and I think, uh, you know, people come at it from different angles and everyone has their own view and some think it's the NSL comeback and others think it's, uh, you know, all worried about promotion and relegation to the A-League and others are, are wondering about this and that and some worry about, you know, is it going to be other clubs going to have, uh, be financially strong enough and others worry that they're going to be financially too weak and there's all manner of issues. Now, you know, you can ask 100 people, you've got 100 different angles. All I was saying there was that, um, in terms of, a lot, you know, that uh, part of the, you know, there are many clubs that hark back to the NSL, others that weren't around there. And that was, and people compare it to a time when, and they freeze it in time. The 2003, yeah. it ended, that, that league ended. Uh, many of those clubs continue. Other clubs have come along, have grown, have become very large, and many more may come. Who knows where the next big club will come from? It may, you know, we've got massive urban uh, centres growing in Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, elsewhere out of suburban areas, new communities coming in. Every area has to be free to, mm. you know, introduce their own club, which might be the next major big thing in Australia. Now, it's not about only the establishment, be it A-League, be it um, uh, former large clubs, be it MPL teams. So from our perspective, all I was saying there was that um, that was a moment that's frozen in time. Who knows where many of those clubs would be today had, we, had it continued? We, we'll never know and it doesn't matter anymore. What matters is what we've got, that's our starting point and we want to grow it from there. We don't want to restrict those clubs. We want to let them, they're dying to show what they can do. Yeah, and guys, in the comments to all the listeners that are listening, if you have a question for Nick, I've just popped it up there. Please uh, please don't be shy. Uh, he's uh, he's given us uh, his, uh, his Friday evenings when he should be down the pub uh, for the last time for a week. Um, that's right. <laughs> so uh, if you've got any questions for him, just pop them in the comments question. We'll get them, uh, try and get them answered for you. Maxi Santos has done that and he said, uh, then Nick, please allow the estimated uh, clubs with multi generational supporters, history, traditions, and opportunity to grow the current game today like they did in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And I think you just said that, that um, we can't go back to the 80s and 90s, unfortunately. The game's right. changed. That's um, right. However, that's where effectively we want Australia to get back to the. You know, I remember I was talking to you earlier on and, you know, I remember watching Australian football when there's, you know, 10, 15,000 watching MSL games. Mm. We don't get that at daily clubs now. So something's missing. Yep. And also, they were, they, Craig, importantly, I think that those people were going to facilities that aren't as good as today. So 
you know, in fairness, you probably wouldn't have got many women going back in those days because the stadiums yeah. weren't up to accommodate them. They're not many children. Whereas those 15,000 now would bring families along and friends. You get, you, you have to have a multiplier effect. You might, that might mean 30 today. So, you know, that was blokes only, to be fair, back in yeah, those days. Yeah. Not only, but mostly because of the nature of the stadium. So we've got a, a lot of passionate people uh, who would be, come back into the game and also support the A-League as well. It's not just about uh, the, the second division. They would be part of the game. One of the big um, points that James is trying to bring in with the 11 principles is unity and unification. And we we love that. That's what, that's what we're about to Absolutely. Let's let's touch on on the on the topic. It's always a hot topic of finance. How yes. to finance these clubs? And, yep. and look, what one thing we mentioned back in the day, back in the NSL days, um, you know, uh, gate gate receipts was a big thing. You know, and, mm. and clubs generally did live off you know gate proceeds. You know, down here mm. in Melbourne, Melbourne Knights, South Melbourne Derby, it attract ten thousand. Fans of those, who knows, five, six, eight, ten thousand were paying customers, and it was probably three, four, five times the average gate of a normal thing. So, it, for both clubs, it, it would it would mean such a big thing budget wise. Now, yeah. how how do we like the clubs have been, um, you know, told to expect sort of a fine a budget of about between one point five and two million dollars. If the PFA had their way earlier last year, they would have wanted three point five million or something <laughs> like that. How in this day and age are we able to are, are clubs able to 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 um, achieve that financial target? Okay, well, firstly, Tom, you remember, and as we say in our report, uh, many uh, the clubs that are uh, formed our partner group, they've all, they already spend money. They've already they already put so yep. many teams out. You just put up some footage of two of the top clubs in New South Wales last year. Yep. It didn't happen for free. Um, they were already spending money. So there's your starting base. So the question is, how much more do they need to raise? We're not starting from scratch. These are not new entities. These are existing clubs with existing fan bases, existing facilities, uh, existing sponsors. Uh, so you've got, you've got a starting base. From there, you've got to leverage them. And the work that we've done with them is to say, well, okay, if you were in the National Second Division and you were one of 12, 13, 14, 16 teams, what would happen? How would you leverage it? And we are being told by all of them that they what they can do now you you know be able to you've got a sponsor today at x dollars that will be x times two because yep. you know they're uh, they're part of a larger competition national exposure uh, your match day would not only be what it is now which of course is a major part the lower down the the, the picking order you go in competitions around the world um the higher the uh, the proportion of the match day in terms of um, revenue, which is what we see with, with COVID, by the way, so that obviously uh, the major leagues can continue with broadcasting. The smaller leagues depend on match day, and they, they struggle to continue with, with no supporters. So you'd have your match day revenue. Your match day would increase. More tickets, more ticket sales, uh, greater match day events. You'd have sponsors holding, you know, hosting uh, events on match day. You've got merchandising, and, of course, you've got, uh, we're expecting to have streaming of our games uh, through um, uh, well streaming services so that we, we're expecting those to at least break even. We're not allowing for more to start with, but what the sponsors can do with that national exposure that each club would have is substantial. So we've um, our clubs are very confident that they can bridge the gap between their present expenditure, putting out their present first teams, to what uh, further they will need to do to um, meet the national costs that they will have to incur if they're playing in a national competition. So that's why we're very careful to make sure that where we start is responsible and viable and we're confident it can start and launch, and then we'll go from there. And that, that's, that's the aim. We don't want to set it at a level that perhaps is a bit too ambitious yeah. and we, we fail. We've waited so long. We've waited so long. Let's get it right. And that's our thing. You know, let's not worry about... Um, a major, you know, bells and whistles start. Let's mm -hmm. do the best we can. And, but let's also not go below what we can do. That's, that's critical. That's where we started the conversation. We want to we wanna do the best we can. Yeah, I like that idea of having quality right from the outset and having yeah. certain standards. Craig, you're going to No, it has to be, Tom. We have to have the quality from the outset. We can't, you know, we can't not have that. It's the, it's the national second division, the championship, whatever it's going to be called. We have to have the best teams play at the best level at every time. Um, otherwise, we go back to the conversations we've had for 
for 18 months about the best players not being able to play against the best players. And then we're not going to develop and the best players are not going to get the opportunity to play. We've already said tonight that some of the best players in junior MPL are not playing at MPL clubs. Yep. They're playing a com com at community clubs. So it's really important that the, the, the AAFC, the, the Football Federation, get it right from the outset. Um, I'm sure they will. Um, it's, ev it's something that, you know, every football lover in Australia want to see. Um, mm. and, and let's hope that, you know, we can get it pretty quickly uh, without rushing it. Um, and make sure that it's uh, it's right when it's uh, when it's set up. Just question from me and Arthur Clusis has, um, has has asked the question: Will the initial selection have geographical emphasis primarily on economic 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 capacity? Uh, sorry, so what was that? I missed part. No, of I have no idea. So uh, will the, <laughs> you uh, just will the initial selection have a geographical word. emphasis? But, uh, so look, that's actually it's actually a good question. Uh, and it's one that we've considered carefully in our report, and it's one of those ones which uh, it cuts across this, you know, the financial issue. It cuts across it, tapping every player around the country, the youth players. It's it's a very um, uh, complicated way to. Um, it's a complicated thing to, when you consider all the considerations. So that um, you said before, Craig, that you want the best teams. Well, the best teams are sort of in the best centres, generally speaking, because that's where people congregate, the populations, the players. Yeah. At the same time, if you just make it about that, are we going to have a Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane competition? Then what happens to Tassie, Canberra, Adelaide, WA? So we we work on the basis that we want to set the level uh, where our clubs have told us nationally we, would, we wouldn't be excluding areas. We don't want to exclude areas because we have favoured in a particular way that the modelling favours certain clubs. We don't want to end up necessarily that the, the first 12 were Melbourne and Sydney. Um, we want to, we want, we're conscious of setting the level um, where it can be met by ambitious clubs from around the country without specifying it must have X geographical region or Y. Because that, that you get into that um, um, hands from above type controlling controlling type um, governance that we think has actually been a bit of a problem for, for our football in this country where it's been directed from above rather than let it find its level. So we want to find a level but set the parameters at a level where it, um, provided clubs meet the criteria and we set the criteria at a level where they can meet them from around the country, we'll have a broad-based a broad based competition so that our players, you know, you're from Queensland, you're not travelling to Melbourne to get a game at the second division. You can find somewhere relatively local. Australia's not that big to be too local, but relatively local, so that young people aren't all leaving their homes to go get games for the bigger clubs. Could it be split then? So could the could the possibility be there of, of, of a split division? So we have a north-south divide, whatever, because I've just done a bit of a calculation there for teams from Perth that come into Melbourne. Let's just say it's it's $500 return flight. Um, you've got 22 players with officials that probably be more than that. You're talking, you know, 12, 13,000 per game, which is which is potentially a lot of money. So is there, unfortunately for, 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 for teams like Perth, you're in the middle. It's I used to call it Greece when I uh, when I came here because it's that far. It's four hours on a plane. So it's it's got it's, good benches too. Sorry, got good benches too. <laughs> Spoken like a true Greek. Um, <laughs> yeah, is is there is a possibility of a of a split and then coming into a a, a Champions League effect at, then at the end of the season? Is that is that a possibility? Uh, look, look, great. Look, it's possible. The question it brings us back again to what's best. So we've considered costs, um, and we, you know, for a team, if Perth were to apply, a Perth team or a couple of teams were to apply, were to meet the criteria, would be selected. Then, of course, you'd put them at a great disadvantage if they're paying for their flights and you know, week uh, every second week to come out of there. So we'd have to have. We're looking at having some sort of centralised fund to to at least to manage that reasonably to allow yeah. a team like that to come in, but. The flip side of having a regional comp in a, in a small place like Australia with a small population is then you defeat your first point, which was to get the best against the best playing, which is not only clubs, uh, Craig, but it's also you know the bigger matches, which will bring the bigger revenues, which will you know get us back to that those uh, match day receipts that we were talking about, yep. etc. So if you took Melbourne and Sydney into different uh, competitions, you've lost that. 
So these are you started to get into the sorts of thinking that we've had to do for the last um, yeah, yeah. Six the months in preparing our report. And there's no there's no absolute right answer here. I mean, you, you can argue it uphill, down dale. That's why we're saying you come to the, the the best answer you can and start. Because if we're going to sit here and talk about the ideal answer rather than the best available answer, we'll be talking forever. And there will be two other blokes on the radio with uh, you know heads like yours and a bloke with a head like mine here in ten years from now having the same discussion. Yeah. So you know we want we want to start because we won't start meeting every single box ticked uh, perfectly. Just can't happen. Yeah. So that, that, that's what we've identified. But it doesn't mean we can't start because we can't tick every box. Yeah. That's, that's the issue. We're speaking to Nick Alatis, the um, chairman of the AAFC, the As Association of Australian Football Clubs. Nick, thank you very much for joining us on here. Um, I guess the last question, well, we're going to wrap it up, and, and this it, it is a, a discussion that can certainly go on. But um, where are we at now, as in, how realistic can we expect, well, probably this year unlikely, but maybe in 2022? And is it a possibility that what James is suggesting, like having some sort of an NPL playoff system, could that be the forerunner to the um, proper N NSD and having it maybe at the end of this year, for example, as a mini-style tournament? Where are um, we at? Where, what can we okay. expect? So a couple of questions. <laughs> a long yeah, question. I know. And a couple of questions there, don't you? But if I can start with the first one, if it were to be a model like ours, obviously I can speak about that because we've modelled that. We haven't modelled, uh, you know, what James has proposed in great detail, although we've, we've covered it. Um, we we would say that a model like ours, if we worked with FA from now to introduce it and it were to align with an A-League competition, as, again, I think um, uh, as uh, Football Australia has put out its sort of its calendar, they want to align the game, which is great and they want to have one calendar for all matches uh, and play everybody at the same time, assuming it's a winter-type season in the A-League, and we're, it's an assumption, uh, we would be ready, or even if it's a summer one, we'd be ready to start um, and align with the season after next. So if the A-League season now finishes in June, I don't know when the next one's going to start. I don't know if anyone does, but um, that will be another season after the present one. The one after that, we'd be ready to align with it. So mm -hmm. the way we look at it is uh, we'd finish up the modelling, um, we would then put out an expression of interest, and when I say we, it'll be you know a football Australia led um, uh, led process. Uh, clubs would be selected, and then you'd be in a process where you'd give them a run in, maybe about twelve months, uh, to start the season, to get ready, to um, get organised, meet the new criteria, ensure that everything's in order. There's things like player contracts to you know standardise stuff like that to prepare. There's all sorts of things. You'd, you'd have your year, and then you'd start. So that would be if it were our competition. Um, as we've proposed it. As to whether or not you can start a uh, an end-of-season competition earlier, well, you probably could because it's it's a lower-level uh, type uh, competition proposed. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yes, you could start that earlier. We've sort of got a finals comp now. Um, I think James is proposing something more uh, involved uh, than that, but I imagine that could start earlier. Could it be a forerunner? It could be. Who knows? But from our perspective, again, we just want to start with the best possible. We don't want to start that one road and then change again. It's been so long that we'd want to start with what we're saying. And at least, given that in James is saying it's philosophically preferable, let's at least work on excluding that and say, why can't we have that before we jump into something else? Yeah. So that's where we are at the moment. We're thinking we've got, uh, we can demonstrate the, um, the viability of what we propose. And if we do, we think yep. we can start the season after next in terms of the early the early calendar that, that's Great. the timing that we we envisage fantastic well nick uh, i think we're gonna have to wrap it up there i think uh, we've uh, we've talked too long now and we really appreciate you coming on what we would like to do is uh, later on in the in the season get you back on see where things are progressing get you back on uh, hopefully yeah. we'll have the phone lines up and running as well by then um, or we can get some, uh, some some of our listeners uh uh, phoning in, but really appreciate your time tonight. It's a it's a great opportunity. Really exciting to see that it's uh, it's it's going somewhere now. You were right about James. He's uh, he's done a lot uh, of good in a short space of time at yep. the at Football Federation. So uh, we have to give a lot of credit to to, to what he's doing there. And um, I think the fact that it's 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 a step ahead. Uh, he's unbundled everything. The Double AFC have their own chairman and they're and and they're looking at. I think it's going to be a, a fantastic and exciting twelve months for football in Australia. 
And Craig, if I can, if I can very briefly, I just want to, make, I want to emphasize that point because there's been a bit of um, take the opportunity to emphasize the point that there's been some impatience out there, um, and you know because we've put out the report and it's been it's been well received and we're very gratified about that. And everyone looks at it and says, well, why why can't we kick it off? Well, they're not the governing body, you know. I, I would, if you're the CEO, you've got a bit to worry about, and we don't have any expectation that someone will pick it up and say, yeah, here it is, let's go. So we're, we're fully aware as an organisation that we're, look, we're a Congress member of Football Australia as well, and we're fully aware that um, someone like James has come in new, replaced uh, a CEO who's been there for a number of years in David Gallup. Uh, he's taken the, uh, there's a new board. He's got a lot of things to implement and there's it's been a lot of things to do. So we understand that and we're very keen to convey that we're just, you know, we're happy to work together and to get this right. And we're not saying, why haven't you started it now? I mean, there's been a lot of work to do. And we know what that, that work has been. It's been public. Uh, and James goes out there and, you know, regularly puts out a, 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 some, as I, a, a little video where he says what he's doing. And I think from our perspective, these are the next steps now. So I just want to make that clear to you, uh, your listeners and everyone that it's not about impatience, it's about getting it right. Yeah, it's not a marathon, it's a sprint. You know, it's a long, long time. We've it's been, been 20 years. It's been Australia's years. Been Australia's been 20 years without one, so That's you know right. another another two seasons is not going to go amiss. But yeah. we have to we have to get it right now for the future of football exactly. in, in in the country. So, if there's goodwill and we're all working in the one direction, I think we'll make this happen. Uh, on that note, uh, we're going to let you go. But before we do, Nick, uh, the comment of the night so far: Maxi Santich, second division in 2023. Only five more lockdowns to go. <laughs> thank you, Maxi, for uh, bringing a smile to our face, yeah, and thank right. you, Nick, for joining us tonight. Uh, we certainly hope that 2021 is not going to be as tumultuous as 2020, but we look forward to hearing more uh, great stuff happening from the AAFC and indeed the national second division. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Good night. Good night. That was uh, Nick Galatas from uh, the Ast Association of Australian Football Clubs. Very interesting um, conversation.